Hey everybody, it's Andrew Reed with Mossy Creek Washrooms, and today uh, I just kind of wanted to stop in the middle of the workday and go over how we make grain spawn um, since I'm about to make it up for you guys anyways. Uh, I've been receiving a lot of questions on why there isn't grain spawn on the website. Uh, we had to take that down because I just got behind on orders on grain spawn, um, and I'm not really set up to do that in mass quantities. So. Uh, I would prefer to leave that to the bigger companies for now and uh, wait till I get a big autoclave or something, right, in order to, to mass produce spawn. But in the meantime, I can absolutely show you guys a no fuss way of making grain spawn on your own at home um, or in your small operation. And, uh, you know, you can just get the liquid culture, spray it in that bag, and bam, you have all the grain spawn you need for a while. So, um, going into that, first let's go into grain choice and why. Our grains look a little different than most people's. <laughs> the, the reason why is because we're using oats. Um, there's a big reason for that, and it's a very long thought out, thought out and experimented reason, um, or experimented with reason, I should say. Uh, first off, they are nutritious. Oh my goodness. The protein content in oats is higher than I think any other grain out there. Um, that said, nitrogen is a protein-bound molecule. Meaning, the higher your protein content, more likely you're going to have a higher nitrogen content. Nitrogen is good for fast growth. It is, you know, if anyone who knows anything about plants know that plants use up a lot of nitrogen when they're, they're in their vegetative phase. Uh, mushrooms also like a lot of nitrogen, so that's really good for that. Now here's the most important reason, and even if oats were less, than, less nutritious than other grains, I would still use oats. Um, Oats take a beating, they take abuse, they take neglect. I mean, what, what could be more perfect for someone who has, you know, a ton of stuff on their plate already and they need a way of making grain spawn that they can set and forget. Um, that being, oats have hard, you know, whole oats have hard holes. Um, they don't burst in the pressure cooker as easily as millet or rye or wheat. Um, that's why I got away from all those things. Uh, oats are typically available year-round, where oftentimes, if you're in one part of the country or another, they often have seasonal availability of wheat, rye, and or millet. And you'd have to buy in large quantities then and store your grain for a while. With oats, you should be able to get those most times of the year, and you can buy them in small quantities from your local co-op or tractor supply even. Um, <clears throat> that said, Going into the nutrition aspect, and, and one of the big things that set me off into my love for oats is an article I read on the Shroomery. Uh, I will link that below in the description. You guys can go take that out. Uh, warning, there's a little bit of language in it uh, because it is on the Shroomery. So, you know, this is, I got this from back when I was in the early days of mushroom growing, and there were almost no resources out there other than like the Mushroom Cultivator, Growing Gourmet uh, and Medicinal Mushrooms by Paul Stamets and the shroomery and mycotopia so um that being said check out that article you'll kind of you'll he goes in a lot more detail about why choose oats and I, I highly suggest reading that um the method that i prep my grains is uh is uh, trust me go into the the comments uh, if you're the first person watching you may not see this but very shortly afterwards, you're going to start seeing all the hundreds of different ways I'm doing this wrong. So <laughs> go check out all the other grain spawn methods. My method is the way I make grain spawn. It's the, the exact same way we do it here in our op. That is the fermentation method. I prefer to ferment my grain spawn. Now, that being said, it is a soak method, not a cooking method or a pre-cook or a steaming or anything else. Uh, I see a lot of people trying to keep their grain... Um, you know, warm, or they try to cook it down. Um, the, the truth is that a soak method is so much less labor intensive than any other method that I have found. You literally just take your grain, fill up your container with five gallon bucket is what I used to standardize on. We use a, a bin now with a little valve on it so we can just open that up to drain everything out. Um, but the five gallon bucket, you fill it up two thirds of the way full with grain, and then you fill it up the rest of the way full with water. That grain will swell up as it soaks in the water. Um, and then you just leave it. You leave it for 12 hours, 24 hours. You can use hot water for faster uh, swelling if you want, uh, faster absorption, I should say. You can use cold water. Uh, it just takes 
slightly longer, not much uh, in my estimation. <clears throat> um, and it's as simple as that. You just come by the next day, you strain it, and then you bag it and cook it like you normally would. This, I have found, has left perfect hydration level. Those oats don't burst, so even if they've absorbed a little bit more than the optimum water content, they're not gonna burst like wheat or rye will. So the combination of soak and oats makes this method really possible. Now, something else that we do that's a little different than what a lot of people, uh, and I'm positive this is gonna get a lot of people disagreeing with me. Um, we, we used to add a little bit of yeast into our buckets and we would allow things to get really frothy. Or you can let it sit longer and allow the natural yeasts to take a hold and, and they'll, you just let your bucket get nice and bubbly before you strain it. And there's reasons for this. I, I think this is the way we do it. I feel like I have no data to support this, but I feel like the fermentation really opens up the nutrients, makes things bioavailable. Any anti-nutrients that would be in the holes of the grain, like um, if you read about whole oats and things like that, and where anti-nutrients exist, it's usually on the holes of the grain. Um, fermenting those, allowing that your water to get nice and fermented, brothy and everything else, you get to pour all that stuff off. Um, it's, it seems to me that the grain grows in a lot better this way, and I do hope to have data for that soon. Uh, even if that isn't the case, the labor saving of the soak method is enough for me to do it as is. Okay, so going with that, I, I've really noticed a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are going into grain spawn and they're making it as complicated as they can possibly make it. You know, they're, they're keeping things warm while it's, while it's uh, swelling up. They're boiling it for just so long. Um, and then they've got, to, they've got to strain it, let it sit for 10 minutes exactly to allow evaporation to take place. And I mean, oh my gosh, guys, no, stop it. Like, just pour the grain in a bucket, pour water in a bucket, and then strain it and cook it. Like, it's, it's a very simple process, and you can make really clean grain. I can do generation after generation after generation of expansions on these before it ever goes bad. So I'm obviously getting good sterility. Um, Part of that sterility comes from a two and a half hour cook, which oats can survive better than any grain out there anyways. So um, <clears throat> that being the case, how about we make up some really quick and uh, then we'll say goodnight to it, eh? Alright guys, it's that easy. Tomorrow we'll come in, we'll strain it um, just by turning that valve and allowing it to drain through and after that we'll bag it. So it's going to be a very easy way to go about it. Now I will say, like I said before, that I used to add yeast and this is going to be a bit controversial I'm sure or there's going to be an ick factor here so you are forewarned but uh, I don't do that anymore. Anymore I just now, uh, well, that's it. Spit in the bucket. You got yeast. That's all it takes. Spit in the bucket. Spit in the bucket. It's gross, Andrew. It's super gross. Super gross. Incredibly effective. So, I mean, you're already growing mush and slimes and molds and stuff. So, you know, is what it is. But, <laughs> anyways, guys, that is what I do to uh, inoculate my bucket. And, uh,. With that, guys, I'm going to say good night. I'll see you in the morning for the rest of this video. Well, good morning. Afternoon. It's actually closer to evening. It's about 5 o'clock here. So you can see that we actually went a few hours over what uh, I was expecting to. That said, the grain got good and bubbly. 
Now, with it getting good and bubbly, there's a problem with that. I forgot to get that uh, on video for you guys. So it's actually already draining. I did get some shots of, the, of it draining, and I got some shots. Uh, I'm about to get some shots of, of us bagging. That said, I'll overlay some, some footage of uh, some B-roll of, of the, you know, the, the nice bubbly action, like in a bucket or something, something I've taken previously. But it'll give you guys the idea of what I'm looking for. Uh, that said, guys, all that's left is for us to bag it up. I'm going to shoot for about five pounds per bag in my, um, what are they, uh, the unicorn bags with the 0.2 uh, micron filter patch. I'll have a link for those below. Uh, I can fit six of those into my All American 75X uh, sterilizer, and I can fit four of those five pound bags in a Presto, I think it's a 23 quart, maybe 28 quart, I can't remember off the top of my head. That said, I'll link both of those down below as well. Um, which means that if I'm running one of each, I can do 10 bags at a time. Um, now, with that, I'm going to bring the grain back inside because I've had it outside draining. And we'll get it bagged up. And then tomorrow we'll cook it at uh, 15 PSI for two and a half hours uh, while the employees are doing lab work. So uh, why don't we get started on that, shall we? Boy, that light's bright, huh? <laughs> well, uh, as you guys can see, well, you'll see in the B-roll that I overlay on this, uh, one 50-pound bag of oats made 18 bags, uh, or five-pound bags, roughly speaking, of grain spawn ready to be sterilized and inoculated. And uh, this cost me a few minutes of work on one day and a few minutes on another day. I've not stayed, stood around for hours. I've not had to watch anything or maintain anything. In fact, I was cooking liquid culture for maybe the the 40 minutes it took me to make the mess and clean up the mess. Um, and that, that liquid culture was done. So I did two things at once. This is what I really like about this method, y'all. It really helps you in your labor. Your labor is so important, especially if you're trying to do every step yourself as a mushroom grower. Um, really a mushroom farmer, I shouldn't even say mushroom grower, you are mushroom farmers if you are selling these things. And your time is so important because you need to be focusing on reworking your business plan all the time, making sales and doing all the other hundred things you need to do. This frees up so much time over any method I have found so far. So with that said, uh, tomorrow I'm going to come in, I'm going to cook it at uh, two and a half hours at 15 PSI. And after that, uh, you know, it'll be ready to inoc be inoculated once it's cool. So uh, it's a very simple process, very quick. You do have to play your day at, uh, <clears throat> play plan your day out in advance, but just a little bit of planning on when to do your grain spawn every week, and bam, you've opened up hours a week now that you can you can provide for yourself and all the other projects you've got. So uh, with that, y'all. Please hit that uh, thumbs up button. 
hit subscribe if you haven't already. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram. I don't even know what else Robin and Melanie have set up now. And uh, as always, y'all, keep swimming culture. <laughs>